Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night, 12 by 12 page layouts. Let me go ahead and do a really quick introduction for those of you that might be watching me for the first time. My name is Barbara Ragsdale and I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and I live in the San Antonio, Texas area. Hi Stella! If you're watching me, you're probably watching me live. If you see a live in either corner um, of the video, if not, you're probably watching me on my replay or on my YouTube channel. And if you're watching me on YouTube and watching the replay, thank you so much for, for watching my videos. And um, every Wednesday night, I come to you live in order to show you how to use your Stampin' Up! products for your scrapbook pages. So if you are a scrapbooker and you need some fresh ideas um, as well as some tips on how to use your Stampin' Up! products to make your page layouts, you're in the right place. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, I see Veronica, I see Cindy. Great ladies, thanks for joining. Um, if you missed last week, we were working with the Hydrangea Hill Suite from the January to June mini catalog. And so um, I'll show you that page when I get the camera pointed down. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started and let's give away um, some, some sample paper. And I'll show you what the, uh, the monthly special is too. So let's get this pointed around. Get this going here. I think it's low enough where I can actually see the comments. So let me, um, I intended to open up this wheel before I got started, but so every single week um, for the layouts, I will give away a sampling of it's so far. It's been some coordinating designer series paper and let me un rubber band that and get the right wheel up when you like comment and share my videos that actually gets you into the drawing for the prizes that I give away and if you've not yet seen the hydrangea hill designer series paper you're going to get the prize is a sampling it's a four by six sampling I'm trying to fan this out a little bit of this gorgeous paper so if you like things purple purpley purple you're gonna love this paper and that's just one side our paper is double-sided so you have these other coordinating designs that match the other side so let's give away a sampling Who's it gonna be? I think Veronica. Veronica, were you the winner last week? I think you were. Who is it? Who is it? Stella. Stella's watching. I think you were the first one to say hi. Well, congratulations, Stella. And that's how you get on the wheel and that's how you can win. It's really that simple. When you like, when you comment, and you share, if you share my video, you get two entries into the drawing. So um, I know that Stella is really gonna use this paper because she always sends me pictures of the things that she makes when she wins any of the, uh, the product that I give away. So let's get that put aside. And let me bring up the picture for tonight. Get it to a point where I can see it. If you missed last week, uh, this was last week's layout. Put that there. This was last week's layout, so we're going to be doing the other page. But before I get started on that, let me just let you know um, this is the March online ordering special. So there's my website and there's the host code. So when you place an order on my website and it's at least $25 or more, which you can also scan that QR code while you're watching. 
until it's not covered up because eventually it's going to get covered up. But the March online ordering special is a kit to make all four of these cards. So uh, see if I can do it where y'all can all see that at the same time. And everything is already cut for you, die cut for you. Um, this is the most simplest monthly online ordering special that requires very, very little stamping, if any at all, which I think this card right here is strictly die cuts and designer series paper and even the insides decorated. So that's what you'll get. And that's your free kit. That's my, that's my grandfather's cuckoo clock, you guys. Um, let me just tell you something. I don't know who all has cuckoo clocks, um, but that is something that I inherited when my my grandfather passed away. My dad passed away. My grandfather gave it to me, but then like a year and a half, my grandfather passed away. And I kid you not, I have not heard that thing in months and it just went off. That is some spooky stuff going on in this household sometimes. And I, it didn't get wound or anything like that. So I have no idea why it just went off, but I want to just believe that my grandfather is telling me hello <laughs> with his, uh, with his cuckoo clock. <laughs> so, okay. So that was the monthly special. And then the other thing that I want to share with you is, um, when you join my email list, which you can scan this QR code, or you can, if you can type all that in, you can type all in, but I'll put it, I'll put the link in the comments when the video is over. But it, in order to join my email list, well, let me put it to you this way. When you join my email list, um, you're going to get a free PDF tutorial, which um, a couple of weeks ago, I went in there and refreshed it. So it's a nice, fresh um, tutorial. And you're also going to get the new Stampin' Up! annual catalog that goes live on May 4th. And those catalogs will be mailed out middle of April. But if you're an active demonstrator in lieu of an annual catalog, because I know you're going to get your own, um, I have another little special welcome gift for you that I think you're really going to like. Um, but I will need your mailing address so that I can get you your little complimentary um, thank you gift for joining my email list. So I just wanted to point that out because um, in less than maybe a couple of weeks, I don't know what today's date is. I didn't look up today's date, but, um, oh, it's the 10th. Today's the 10th. In about two weeks, active demonstrators are going to be getting access to the next new annual catalog, the new PDF version. So, yay. Let me read some comments here. Hi, Landa. Oh, hi. Uh, who was that? The, the comment went up. Mary Ann. Stella loves cuckoo clocks. Yeah. I love cuckoo clocks too, but you know, when I'm not expecting it to go off and it goes off, it's kind of creepy. So let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and get page two going here. I'm um, just going to move this out of the way just a little bit that way hopefully it won't get covered up too too much and everything is already cut I think there's only like one thing that I am going to do um, just in case somebody missed it last week so okay let's go ahead and get this thing going here we're going to almost mirror image hopefully I have enough um, enough seal going on in here why is this not coming out because I'm live that's why okay. this basically is the same strip that was on the other side of the um, the scrapbook page because I tend to I tend to mirror um, all of my images and I'm just kind of leaving about a half of an inch and I'm getting it lined up to the top because once you have your first piece on and it's straight and everything lines up then everything else will tend to fall in its place 
Okay, and then I also have a strip of our um, the acetate paper that goes with the hydrangea hill, and I left the piece on because um, if you missed it last week, you can cut our acetate paper, and this is true for any of our acetate paper. It does it does it doesn't just have to be. Let me say that slowly. Um, this particular kind, because there are times that we have products that are other designs of acetate paper. Um, and then this particular back side is like a silver side. And then you've got this purpley side. And if you don't know this, I've got some tape here because I wanna show you, let me just pull some tape off of there. The acetate paper has a really, really thin film behind it that protects the paper itself from scratches and whatnot. And you're gonna use just some regular scotch tape, but you don't wanna put it on the side that has the purple. And you don't wanna do that because this can take off some of that purpley design. So on the back, put your scotch tape on the corner, give it just a little bit of pressure. And then when you go to peel it back, look at that. You've got this really thin film that's going to come off. Ta-da! And then you just throw that away. You don't need that. That just helps protect the paper. Um, I think the first time I used this, I did not do that. And it wasn't like a crazy big difference, but it does make the image on the other side a lot more clearer. Okay, so now let's put this down and we're just gonna bump this piece up against this piece of designer series paper. And then I have a strip of old olive. And if you notice, my strips are getting a little smaller as we start going into the center of this. And then we're gonna bump this one right up against this one as well. This designer series paper has old olive and then it also has mossy meadow so it's got a couple of shades of green okay and then i also have a, a strip of our uh, gorgeous grape sheer ribbon pretty i know veronica's watching this and this is her favorite her favorite her most favorite of all ribbon and let me put some tape on the edge of that and then we're just going to fold that over so that the back side it holds that in place and then we're going to pull this straight a little bit but not too tight that your paper starts to come to curl like that okay so we'll get another piece of tape hold that in place if you're worried about your tape moving um, you can always put a glue dot in the center right there to keep that in to keep that in place. But I'm not going to put one there for this time. Okay, and then I'm going to put this piece of designer series paper down here at the bottom left. And this is the designer series paper that looks like it's just a. Um, like a little field of hydrangeas and with a blue sky. And the other side has this really pretty design as well. But I really wanted to showcase um, this particular piece of designer series paper. So let's get some adhesive on the back of that. And I, I used a, I purposely used a larger piece just because I wanted to be able to fill this bottom piece pretty good so with what's left here you want to just line that up and I think it's slightly larger it is I miss um, I misjudged the edge there so let's fix that let me get I'm bringing my paper trimmer over so I can go ahead and, but I had stuff sitting on my paper trimmer. So let's go ahead and let's take that off. 
I'm just going to put that in there. That part that's overhanging. Oops, I just moved it. Ah. You could also use your paper snips if you really wanted to use your paper snips. Just to take that off. There we go. Okay, yeah. That way it's more in line with what I'm trying to do here. Okay, and then what are we doing next? Oh, I've got this piece right here. This piece was on the other side, and I decided to go ahead and put a mirroring piece. And basically, it's just a square piece of designer series paper that has been... Um, torn in half. I didn't do a really good job of tearing and um, if you have a tearing tool you can certainly use a tearing tool but Stampin' Up! doesn't have a tearing tool so I just had to kind of manually do that because I didn't want to show well let me put it to you this way we had a long time ago I don't even remember when it was discontinued but um, we did have a tearing tool a long time ago that came in its own little case, but I didn't use it on here because you can't buy these anymore. And I don't want to show you anything that you can't buy, okay? And then I also have a um, these three squares. I didn't do anything special with these squares as far as um, using the rectangle stitch dies or any of the square dies or anything like that. These are just really plain squares that we're going to mat together here. We're going to put this on this piece of Misty Moonlight and then let's put some adhesive on the back of this one and we're going to mat this one on top of this piece of basic white. Okay, And then let me find my dimensionals. Where'd my dimensionals go? There we go. Gonna put, we're gonna put these up on dimensionals. That way we've got some dimension going here. So we're just gonna put one on each corner on the back. You know what, this is kinda large. Let's put one in the middle too. There we go. And then you gotta peel these little pieces off to expose the adhesive. Okay, and then we're gonna put this one right up in here and we're gonna center it where this piece of um, Highland Heather. This is a Highland Heather base, by the way. And you can find um, the only bases that are sold in 12 by 12 packs are our basic white and our very vanilla. All the other colors, if you ever see me use them, they're always part of a pack. So um, in order to get, you know, a piece of the Highland Heather um, or Old Olive, or Mossy Meadow, whichever ones you see me use, you'll have to actually purchase the um, the Subtles pack, the 12 by 12, or the, the Regals. I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of this one as well. I think I have enough big ones here. If not, I've got a little tip to show you here whenever you start running dry on your your large dimensionals. Okay, and let's put this one right here. Right above where the end of that designer series paper ends. And I decided to duplicate um, this little design, which is using the rectangular. Let me get this on here because I know I can't talk and do this at the same time. I am matting this piece of designer series paper on a piece of mossy meadow that is literally an eighth of an inch larger than the designer series paper. Just so we have a little bit of that green poking out there. And then this larger piece, this misty moonlight, I'm gonna bring it up when I'm 
done here. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but this piece of Misty Moonlight has the stitch edging. I use the rectangular stitch dies to die cut this Misty Moonlight. And then I know you can't see it, but it's there. But I also did the same thing with the Designer Series paper as well. And then we're just going to put this one straight down right here. Okay. And then I also have another one of these mats where I've gotten this gorgeous grape. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's got some really light flowers on it. We're going to mat that one just like we did this other one over here on this side. And then we're going to mount that also with some dimensionals okay but let's just pretend like I'm like complete even though I do have a few of them on here um, on your sheet of dimensionals whenever you get to the end where you've used all of your larger ones um, don't forget these pieces that are all around the edge those are also dimensionals you can take those off and oops and use those as well so if you need a big strip you can certainly make a long strip or if you need just half size ones you can cut those in half at the little bitty marks and same thing oh, there goes the cuckoo clock again just make sure you peel those off that way you expose that adhesive on the back and then we're going to put this one on the other side try to center it and get it a little in line um, if you were doing this you could certainly turn this mat whichever way you wanted to turn it but these are designed for pictures so if you have some pictures you want to mat you can certainly put those there okay and then I also have one of the pieces of designer series paper has this particular design and I manually cut this out so I fussy cut this one and then I have a dimensional on the back um, I really like that little bouquet and I wanted to put it somewhere on here so we are just going to stick it right here in the middle of that just to have something there and break up between put something between those pictures and break up that particular um piece okay and then i don't know if you remember me making these last week but we're gonna make I'm, I'm only doing two of them on this page and i made one but just in case the stamp set has this particular little leafy image and i stamped those on old olive but i stamped them in mossy meadow that way the image was was dark was pretty dark and you could tell what it is and I just roughed up these little flowers just to give them some dimension that way they're not flat okay and then we're gonna put those together so I'm gonna get a glue dot on the front if I can get the glue dot off Here we go and then we're gonna put these two together just kind of like that so now I have that piece and then I also made I also made flowers and how I did the flower is one of the dies in the set are these two flowers right here I just um, die cut them out in white and I'm going to use a glue dot on the back of that we're actually going to mat two of these together to make a little flower. And when you put this one on top of the other one, turn it sideways so that all the little petals, you can see petals all the way around. So there's that piece. And then we're using um, these pastel pearls. And just grab a pearl. Um, I've been using these Highland Heather ones and the Gorgeous Grape ones and just stick one in the middle. Oops. Uh-oh. 
I got a little adhesive there and it pulled up the paper a little bit. And then all I did after that was I pulled two sides of the petals up just to give it some dimension like that. Okay. And then we're going to put a glue dot on the back of that and stick it in the middle of where these two pieces of leaf came together. Okay. And then I'm going to put another glue dot on the back of that. So glue dots become your friends. Glue dots and dimensionals. I'm going to put two of them on there just to make sure it sticks. Okay. And I have one right here. I'm going to put one right there. So that'll be up to the right of that mat. And then the other one that I made, that one go. I have another one, but I don't remember where I put that one because it's not on my picture. Huh. Okay. We'll just go with it. Um, but I also die cut one of these leaves. And then I also used the die cut that, that cuts out all the little flowers. And I went ahead and popped most of these up just to give it some dimension. And we're gonna put a dimensional on the back of that. And we're gonna put that flower down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And let me make sure I'm gonna put a glue dot on the right side. Uh-oh. I'm gonna put one up closer to the top. I need to get rid of this excess tape here. You also have the choice to use our adhesive as well on these delicate dies. And we're just going to put this one down here. And then let me peel this dimensional backing off. And we're going to put that there. And then I made a ribbon. I went ahead and made a ribbon using the Gorgeous Grape Sheer Ribbon. And let me get a couple of glue dots on the back of that one. And we're gonna put that there. Kinda cover that little piece up where those two pieces come together. And then let's put a pearl in the middle of that. Let's see. Let's put, let's put one of these, these on there. Just so we can really see some different color right there. And our pearls automatically have this little adhesive backing on them. But if you're ever worried about them it coming off or popping off, you could certainly put a glue dot behind that in order to help it like really, really stick. Okay. And then let me get, I'm going to get, oops, I'm going to get this out because I have to cut something. And if you're wondering where I got this, it's because as demonstrators, sometimes we get the coolest tools. Am I right? I know I have some demonstrators watching and some of you guys may even have this, but what I did is I took the, um, I think this is from the Tasteful Labels dies and I die cut out one in uh, Misty Moonlight and then I also die cut one out with the designer series paper and I made sure that the designer series paper is kind of going horizontal because this can be used as a small little journaling mat. But I want to mat this on top of some cardstock so I took the same die cut and how I'm going to do that is just cut this in half uh, lengthwise and you get this in the middle. But yes, we get access to the coolest tools as demonstrators. So, and so now I have these two pieces. So let me move this up to up there so that I don't get any adhesive on this. And we're going to put adhesive on the back of this top die cut. And we're going to mat this. So just kind of line it up. Okay, and then we'll do the other side. And line it up. 
go. And so now you have a mat. You have a piece of designer series paper on the mat. And then we're going to put two dimensionals, one on the back of each side. Take those backings off. And then we're going to put that one up here to kind of help fill in some of this little area up here. Okay, and then these little flowers that I made, let me get rid of some of this excess here. We're going to put one on the top of that mat. Right there, you can always fluff your flowers back up. And then the other one, we're going to put on the bottom. Get a glue dot on the back of that. And then let me take a peek at my picture and make sure I got everything, which it looks like I did, except this little fella. Where should I put him? He needs a home. Where can I put him? We'll put him right there. There we go. I think I made one, and when I made it, I it might have been an afterthought, because it's not on my picture that I'm looking at. So we will just make an executive decision right now and put him right here to help put little flower on the other side of that picture. And then you guys, that is it. I hope you can see the whole thing. It looks like you can. So let me bring, um, let me bring the left side out. May have to do some adjusting to, so that you can see both of them side by side. Let's see. Let me bring this one out and let me see if I can bring this up just a little bit. Well, that did not work very well. I pulled the whole, <laughs> I pulled the whole thing out. Okay, let's try this. There we go. I literally pulled like the whole thing out of the holder, you guys. <laughs> Okay, I think you guys can see both of the layouts from this particular angle. So if not, I know when I take a picture and post it, you'll be able to see both of them. So I can see Stella's comments. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, thank you. So I hope that you enjoy this particular layout. And um, I will post the supply list. Once I'm done um, with this video, I'll go add the supply list and I'll, go, I'll also go add the link um, if you want to join my email list in order to get either a free catalog or your free PDF tutorial, or if you're an active demonstrator and you still want to join, um, you can get another little free gift that I think you're going to find equally cute that you can use with your scrapbooking. So thank you, Mary Ann. So thank you guys for joining me tonight, and if you want to join me on Sunday afternoon, I'll be back here at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Otherwise, you can join me next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for the next layout. So good night, you guys. Bye-bye.